Good afternoon, friends. Today I should start on breaks, the second part of the break, and and uh, today's topic should be internal expanding breaks. Now, uh, how the breaks works, the working principle of the breaks, I should discuss. So, so please uh, just look on the board. So this is the internal expanding break. Now, uh, the, you see, this is the breakdown. This is the brake shoe and causes the friction lining and uh, <coughs> this is the radius of the breakdown and uh, this is uh, the applied float p and is break into two components px and py and this is the frictional force mu dn which is also divided into two components mu dn sin phi and mu dn cos phi and this is uh, also uh, this is the normal reaction on the uh, on the on the friction lining which is given by dn it is also broken into two components dn sin phi and dn cos phi and uh, this is the friction lining starts from uh, theta 1 to theta 2 this is the length of the friction lining now how does the brake works suppose this brake is moving in a clockwise direction so when it moves in the clockwise direction what happens what basically happens is that the brake shoe is pivoted over here so what happened as the brake shoe is pivoted over here we uh, give a push, we give an applied load to it and the brake shoe with the friction lining comes in contact with the brake drum and the brake drum now and the brake drum is opposed to motion and the and it ultimately comes to rest. So that is uh, about the brake drum operates. Now uh, this uh, brake shoe along with the pivot and the friction lining all is assembled in the in a rotating brake drum. So as I've discussed and if there are two symmetrical brake shoes on both sides of the brake drum that is specially used in automobiles in four wheelers and two wheelers so basically it is used in four wheelers now this actuating force p this actuating force p is normally given by the <coughs> hydraulic pressure with the help of uh, master cylinder and from the master cylinder it moves to the tandem cylinder and it gives a hydraulic pressure to it hydraulic pressure is given to it this is operated by hydraulic pressure for us very sophisticated vehicles now for a for a heavy vehicles as far as our passenger car and uh, load carrying uh, trucks so this load is given either by pneumatic pressure or by mechanical means anyway we have to calculate what is the applied load where from this load which is the which is ca causing the applied load is not our concern right at the moment our moment of discussion is that what is the amount of load to be given uh, to stop the brake uh, to stop the rotating drum not to uh, to stop the rotating drum now before going to that we have to deal with certain assumptions the first assumption is that intensity of normal pressure between friction lining and brake drum at any point is proportional this is a uh, this is a symbol for proportional is proportional to the vertical distance of the pivot so intensity of normal pressure between the friction lining and the brake drum is proportional to the vertical distance of the pivot vertical distance from the point of pivot at any point is proportional to the vertical distance from the point of from the uh, vertical distance of uh, of the pivot second assumption is that the brake drum and the shoes are rigid the brake drum and the shoes are, are rigid there is no uh, the brake drum and the uh, shoe are very rigid the third assumption is that the coefficient of friction that is mu acting on the shoe so uh, sorry the third assumption is that this is a fourth assumption the coefficient of friction between the acting between the uh, uh, Active in the friction lining and the brake drum is constant. The coefficient of friction is held constant. This is the third assumption. Uh, this is the fourth assumption. The third assumption is that the centrifugal force, the centrifugal force, CF means the centrifugal force acting on the shoe is negligible. That means we did not consider the effect of the centrifugal uh, force on the shoe. Now, as we have discussed that in the previous part, that P is proportional to P is proportional to R sine phi the vertical distance or the vertical distance from the pivot so v p is proportional to r sin phi as we have uh, uh, dealt in the assumption as we have taken as assumption that p is proportional to the vertical distance r sin phi it is the r radius this is the radius of the drum and sin phi so from that we could write p is proportional to from that we could write 
p is proportional to p is proportional to sin phi and as p is proportional from as p is proportional to sin phi as p is proportional to sin phi so we could write a constant put a constant over there and we could write p is equals to c1 into sin phi now uh, you know uh, to uh, to find out the value of the c1 we have to see we have to find out from the boundary conditions so uh, assuming assuming that when p is equals to p max phi is equals to phi max so it is assumed that when p is equals to maximum pressure applied load then the phi then the phi is considered that the phi max then uh, then this phi that is the uh, angle formed by the element uh, this phi this phi is proportional uh, this is the th theta one this phi that is this one this angle formed from this from uh, from the from the axis to the element so at when p is equal to p max then it is assumed that then phi is equal to phi max from that reason from that if you put the value of if you have put the value in this equation p max and c1 is equal to sine c max sine phi uh, in, in place of uh, sine phi we, uh, we put the value of sine phi max we get the value of c1 we get the value of c1 that c1 is equal to p max into sine phi max now we put it into this equation we put this value into this equation now we know the value of c1 so we now we get p is equal to p max by sine phi max into sine phi so this is the generalized form of the equation this is the generalized form of the equation this is the generalized form of the equation now when uh, phi max is 90 when phi max is 90 theta is is theta is greater than 90 so when phi max is 90 uh, if phi max is 90 if this if this phi if this phi is 90 if this phi is 90 then this theta what is this uh, what is theta 2 should be greater than 90 what is theta 2 theta 2 is the angle formed at the end of this theta 2 is the angle formed at the end of the drum that that is the maximum area of the sorry not the drum maximum area of the shoe so theta 2 is the extension of the theta 2 uh, theta 2 is the extension of the shoe so if phi max have to be 90 degree then the theta 2 have to be greater than 90 See that, that is the extension of the shoe have to be greater than the 90 degree. When phi max is equals to theta 2, if phi max is equals to theta 2, uh, then theta 2 is, 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 is less than 90. That is the angle covered by the shoe. Uh, that the angle covered by the shoe should be less than 90. Uh, and at that condition, phi max is considered as theta 2. Then, if you remember the previous form, we have explained, we have find out the value of dn dn is equals to there is a normal reaction is equals to p into r omega into d phi so at the value of p we know the value of p is equal we put the value of p over here and we get p max into r omega by sin phi d phi into sin phi max it is basically the value of p so we put the value of p over here and we get the value of dn uh, and r omega is over there now now we are taking moment now we are taking moment of this dn now now the uh, frictional force uh, that is the frictional force that is what is the frictional force the frictional force is mu dn now this frictional force mu dn what the moment it causes at the pivot the frictional force mu dn the moment it causes at the pivot now this is what if, if you see what is mu dn this is mu dn this is mu dn now the if you if you this is if this is a congested diagram we have just expanded the diagram over here this is mu dn this is mu dn so if mu dn if this is a mu dn so it causes uh, if mu dn so it causes the uh, friction moment then it causes the moment about the pivot what is the moment if this is mu mu dn what is the length that is r minus h so mu dn into the parallel into the perpendicular distance the into the sorry into the uh, parallel distance from the perpendicular distance from the pi void which is r minus h cos phi which is r minus h cos phi so the moment formed is mu dn uh, the moment formed is basically mu dn into r minus h cos phi so this is the moment formed by the frictional force the moment formed by the frictional force uh, uh, towards pi void in the pi void if you take the moment towards pi void the, that is the, the the frictional the, the frictional force uh, causing the moment uh, in the in the in the pi void so this is this is taken as 
m t is equals to integration of mu g n r minus h cos phi. So now if we go for a uh, if we if, if you go, go for the extent if you go for the entire entire break shoe starting that is that is the theta two if you go for the entire break shoe that is from theta one to theta two that is a uh, starting from theta one to theta two if you go for the entire break shoe now we should integrate this value then it becomes mu p max into r. Uh, 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 into sin phi r minus h cos phi d phi over here we have just put the value of the dn we have just put the value of the dn over here that is the value of the dn i have shown previous to the value of the dn is over there and we have the put the value of dn in this equation and we get this form of expression that is the moment caused by the frictional force in the in the pivot so this is the frictional force now the moment caused by the normal force the moment caused by the normal force now what is the normal force if you see this is the frictional force the normal force is like this the, the normal force is like this the basically the normal force is like this so if you see the normal force this is the normal force acting over there these are the two components so what is the normal force distance dn into this one this is dn into pi y this is the perpendicular distance from the pi y that is h sin phi so uh, so if you see over here if uh, we could see over here that is mn is proportional to dn sin phi that is m is integration of dn into h sin phi why h sin phi h sin phi is the distance and normal force is dn and normal force is dn so the force now caused by the normal force uh, towards the pivot is given as mn is equals to integration of dn into h sin phi Now, if we concentrate on the frictional torque, uh, uh, the frictional knots, the frictional moment caused at the pivot, so we find we uh, we have give, uh, we have get this form sine phi is equal to from theta one to theta two because uh, this is the range, uh, this is the range that is theta one, uh, this is the range that is uh, theta one, this is theta one to theta two, this is the range of the friction lining that is theta one to theta two, so sine phi theta one to theta two r minus h cos phi d phi we have got this now we have doing the integration part so we uh, we just put the integration part uh, we take out the constant part r from it and divide it into two parts that is r sin phi theta 1 into theta 2 minus h uh, theta 1 by theta 2 sin cos phi we have converted into cos 2 phi by cos uh, phi we have converted into cos 2 phi by 2 this is cos now theta this is cos 2 phi by 2 this is cos 2 phi by 2 and this is d phi uh, and the uh, and the variation is from theta one to theta two. Now while doing this, we get this value of uh, we uh, we know the value of sine phi is equal to minus cos phi, and the value of cos two phi is equal to cos two phi by four. And we have put the values of theta one and theta two, and we have get this form r one by four uh, is one by four into into four r by cos theta one minus cos theta two minus h into cos 2 theta 1 minus cos 2, 2 theta 2. This we have taken this 4 out, so this 4 goes into this r, the value of r. We have taken this value of 4 out, so this 4 goes into this. So the expression is like this. Now, when we put the value of mt, now when we put the value of mt over here, uh, frictional, uh, frictional uh, force cost, uh, the, the moment of frictional force cost at the pivot is given as mu into p max into rw into 4r cos theta 1 minus cos theta, theta 2 minus h into cos 2 theta 1 minus cos 2 theta 2 by 4 into sin phi max. This is the formulation that we have to be remember. We have to remember. Now if we act, if we consider the forces acting uh, <coughs> on the drum. Now P is the applied force which causes it to move in this direction which moves in the clockwise direction. So applied load is given. Uh, so that the p moves in this clockwise direction so p into c should be taken as negative as so as clockwise so our moment is taken as negative so p minus c is taken as negative moment now again frictional force now frictional force is uh, acting in which direction uh, frictional force is acting in which direction if you see mu dn mu dn mu dn is also acting in this direction uh, mu dn that is frictional force by which i have calculated before also which is acting also in the clockwise direction which is also acting in this clockwise direction so it is also negative so i have put the value of minus mf that is frictional force which is negative now mn normal reaction now normal reaction force is acting in this direction that is uh, towards the anti-clockwise direction 
uh, anticlockwise uh, direction before before that p so uh, it tries to normal direction tends to, uh, to uh, uh, tends to uh, move this in this direction uh, it uh, the shoe it will tries to come like this so what happened it is positive so mn is taken as positive so mn is taken as positive so if you see once more i'm explaining once more this load will try to move it in this direction against the rotating drum so this is clockwise and the frictional force mu dn is also acting in this clockwise direction mu dn is also acting in this direction uh, it is also acting in this direction that is a clockwise direction only the normal reaction is acting in the opposite direction so it tries to move it down it has to shift it shift it down so the normal reaction is the the moment of the normal reaction is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it is taken as positive so it is taken as positive so this is the equilibrium equation now if you put it you get the value of applied load p is equals to mn minus mf by c uh, this is this is for clockwise rotation of the uh, brake drum. Now, if the brake drum rotates in the anti-clockwise direction, only thing will replace uh, it will it will be replaced. Mf will uh, Mn will then become clockwise, and the uh, ultimate equation will become P is equals to Mn plus Mf plus C. So please remember this is for anti-clockwise movement of the breakdown and this is for clockwise movement of the breakdown. So uh, according to me, I have taken the all the I have taken all the uh, uh, anti-clockwise moment uh, positive and the clockwise moment as negative.